Vitamin C and cancer. The debate's been going on a long period of time. But after this last study that just came out, this November 5th, 2015, it really comes down to, yeah, we can observe people or things that take vitamin C get better, but then we take the vitamin C, throw it in a Petri dish, and try to recreate our own experiments and fail. Well, maybe we're looking at the right thing vitamin C does. We're looking at vitamin C fighting cancer as an antioxidant. However, vitamin C may fight cancer in a totally, totally unexpected yet eloquent way. Let us begin. In the study titled, Vitamin C Stress and Kills Mutant Cancer Cells, published in the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, please bear with me. It's a little technical, but after each paragraph, I will briefly explain kind of what it means. Now, keep in mind, stop thinking as a vitamin C as being an antioxidant or a free radical scavenger. Because for these particular type of cancers, that's not how it operated. Let us begin. Researchers studied human colorectal cancer, CRC cells, with certain mutations in genes known as KRAS and BRAF, which regulates cell growth. They show that these cells take up the oxidized form of vitamin C, remember that word, oxidized form of vitamin C, through a certain receptor that is specifically overexpressed, meaning a lot more than normal, or have a lot more receptors than normal, in mutant cells. This leads to oxidative stress, which in turn inactivates an enzyme required for the growth of mutant, but not normal cells. All right, the oxidized form of vitamin C is what actually, in this case, helped slow or eliminate tumor or cancer cell growth. Now keep in mind, this study was done in petri dish and in animals and has to be translated to see if it works in humans. In any case, the way that vitamin C operates to fight cancers and tumors is totally unexpected and yet phenomenally eloquent. So what they mean is this, this dehydroscorbate, this DHA, which is the oxidized used up form of vitamin C, literally it's like, all right, your body uses it as an antioxidant, squelch a bunch of free radicals, and they're in with a lot of this, what's called DHA. Please don't get too uh, uh, confused with the fat. Dehydroscorbate oxidase vitamin C. Well, then, this oxidase form of vitamin C, we'll just call it trash vitamin C for now, goes around and gets stuck in these receptors, think of like, kind of like plumbing for the, the cancer cells, causing the cells, these cancer cells, to oxidize and basically have major, major problems. But let me proceed forward. This is an idea how this oxidized form of vitamin C actually damages these cancer cells. Oh, by the way, more than half of human colorectal cells are these form of KRAS or BRAF, just as a side note. All right. This effect is due to increased uptake of, oxidize, of the oxidized form of vitamin C, as we just stated, dehydroscorbate via the GLUT1 glucose transporter all right, I'm going to explain a little bit more. I don't want to go too technical, but I'll back up and simplify it. Increased DHA, this oxidized form of vitamin C, uptake causes oxidative stress as intracellular, I'll just use dihydroscorbate for simplicity, is reduced to vitamin C depleting glutathione, thus re ROS, otherwise reactive oxygen species, accumulates and inactivates uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, otherwise known as GAPDH. Don't worry about remembering that. Inhibiting GADPH in a highly glycotic, CAR-AS or BRAF mutant cell leads to an energetic crisis and cell death. Energetic crisis. All right. Get rid of all the technical stuff for now. What they basically mean is this. Right, the DHA comes around gets clogged up in these mutant cells, these cancer cells, these, oh, these too many receptors. Remember, it's only affecting the bad cells, not the good cells. So it comes into the play, and it basically prevents the cells from producing something called pyruvate. Now, this pyruvate is something which is real important in what's called, uh, if you're old school nutrition, Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, but bottom line, it helps the cancer cells or tumors produce something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is vital for these cancer cells or tumor cells to uh, have energy and produce more bad cells to make them grow. So here, this bad form of vitamin C, I should say bad, because actually it's good in this case, 
oxidized form of vitamin C comes in, clogs up the plumbing. These cancer cells and tumor cells can't produce the energy it needs to grow, divide, or multiply, or whatever, and therefore this slows the growth and stops the growth completely. So, keep in mind, in the animal studies, they used about four grams per kilogram as a, a translation, 150 pound person, looking at about nine and a half ounces for basic simplicity. So, what they also said too is sometimes in a lot of these studies we use oral forms. Now the form of vitamin C they used in this study was sodium ascorbate and it was done intravenous. So keep this in mind, this was not due orally because they believe that you may not be able to get the amount needed orally to raise the blood levels up to the level to have this impact. Well, how much do you need to raise these blood levels per se? Again, a little technical, but you'll see why in a second. Nevertheless, oh, by the way, they know it's within an hour that vitamin C began to change the energy metabolism of these cells, Let's hurt, the mutant cells. Nevertheless, selective cytotoxicity, the vitamin C was cytotoxic, by the way, against these mutant lines was achieved even in their high glucose concentrations. Don't worry about remembering this, I'll explain in a second. By the 20 millimoles, when treating with less than one millimole of vitamin C, indicating that vitamin C can selectively kill mutant cells under their physiological glucose concentrations of five to 10 millimoles. Importantly, plasma vitamin C concentrations are greater than 10 millimoles are easily achieved in humans in our murine pharmacone ah, pharmacokinetic study without significant toxicity. All right, what I'm gonna reference here too, is to say 10 millimoles is not a lot to achieve on a human level, especially since they already did test on determining uh, vitamin C tolerance at about, if you look at the study here, about 49 millimoles of ascorbic acid. Now keep in mind, this study was done in petri dish, it was done in animals, but it enlightens us into actually how vitamin C may work by killing or inhibiting the growth of certain tumors or cancers. Not necessarily through the production of hydrogen peroxide, not necessarily at, uh, at the uh, at working as a free radical scavenger, even though that's the cool part about vitamin C. Think about it. Here the vitamin C is working as a free radical scavenger, protecting your cells from damage, and then after that's all done, the byproduct of the vitamin C, DHA, dehydroascorbate, uh, all of a sudden it comes around and then clogs up the machinery of the cells that did become mutagenic, that the vitamin C as an antioxidant wasn't act, uh, adequately protecting against. So, nature is amazing and eloquent. Keep in mind, always before you go dousing yourself with vitamin C and things like that, keep in mind this is an experiment. It needs to be repeated, but it offers a lot of hope in regards to a long uh, line of armament against certain types of cancer. Again, Ralph Church Channel, all citations be listed below. And I know this was a little complex, but anyways, thank you for listening. Once again, I really do appreciate it. Catch you later.